Hi there, I'm Tom from Danfoss Climate Solutions. How do you save costs on system shutdown time and service if you have a solenoid valve failure in your system? Well, to answer that, have a look at this video. The videos troubleshoot the following Danfoss solenoid valve types. The EVR valve family, the EVU valve family, the CSV valve family and the coils used for these valves. This video gives you troubleshooting tips so that you can efficiently identify root causes and make corrective actions related to that a solenoid valve does not open. Check out the other online solenoid valve troubleshooting videos to get information about other valve failures and how to solve them. Now, let us then look at the solenoid valve failure where the valve does not open. This valve failure is mostly related to a solenoid valve type normally closed called NC, where the valve is forced closed by a spring and is opened when energizing the coil, as seen here. Here you see an overview of possible root causes related to the solenoid valve not opening when energized and how to solve these failures. Let us go through them step by step. If there seems to be no supply voltage to the coil or maybe incorrect supply voltage, causing the valve not to open, then the first step is to check if the coil is energized by any supply voltage. This can be done by using the Danfoss magnetic field detecting keyring, as seen here, or the Danfoss magnetic tube lab, as seen here. The next step is then to compare the system supply voltage with the coil data. The coil electrical data can be identified from the coil ID marking, as seen here. Make sure that the supply voltage is within the specified voltage tolerances of the given coil type used, as specified here in this example of a coil installation guide. This installation guide is supplied with the coil. The final step is to check that the electrical wiring is according to the instructions in the coil installation guide, as seen in this example. As seen, the electrical wiring depends on the coil and connector type. If the wiring is OK, you should hear a clicking sound from the valve when energizing the coil, as seen here. Now, if there seems to be a coil failure causing the valve not to open despite the coil being energized by supply voltage, then the first step is to check if the coil can be energized and function. Connect correct supply voltage to the coil according to the coil installation guide and check if the coil is energized by using the Danfoss magnetic field detecting key ring or the Danfoss magnetic tool app as mentioned earlier in this video. If the coil is damaged then replace it with a new one. Follow the instructions in the valve and coil installation guides which are supplied with the valve and coil as seen in these examples. Remember to mount a coil o-ring on the valve armature tube between the valve and the coil if needed by the coil type and if not already mounted on the valve. This is shown here in this example. Check out the other online solenoid valve troubleshooting videos to get more information about coil failures and how to solve them. Now, if there seems to be too high or too low differential pressure in the system causing the valve not to open, then the first step is to compare the system differential pressure across the valve with the valve data. In other words, measure the inlet pressure P1 and outlet pressure P2, as seen here. The difference in pressure, that is, the differential pressure, should not exceed the valve max OPD or be below the valve min OPD, as seen in this example here. This to ensure a correct opening of the solenoid valve and ensure that the valve remains open. The next step is to compare the system media and ambient temperatures with the valve and coil data. The system max media and ambient temperatures should be lower than the max value specified for the solenoid valve and the coil as seen in this example here. This to ensure correct opening of the solenoid valve. Finally, if the system conditions cannot be adjusted to ensure that the valve can open, then, if possible, replace the valve and or coil with another type and or size 
to meet the given system conditions. Now, if there seems to be a dirty and or blocked valve armature or servo piston causing the valve not to open, then the first step is to check the movement of these two valve parts. Remember to disconnect the supply voltage to the coil before removing it from the valve. You can check the armature movement without taking the valve apart. This by using the Danfoss Magnetic Valve Tester code number 018F0091 which is available from Danfoss Product Store. Here you can see how to use it to check the armature movement. If you can hear a click, then the armature is freely moving, otherwise it might be blocked. In this case, you then need to take the valve apart, if it is serviceable, to further inspect the valve and clean it if needed. If the armature is freely moving, but the servo piston valve type will still not open, then you need to take the valve apart, if it is serviceable, to see if the servo piston is blocked, as seen here in this example. If needed, clean the internal valve area and parts and ensure that the servo piston is freely moving. If the internal valve parts are worn, then replace them with parts using suitable service kits. If this valve service does not solve the issue and the parts become worn again, then you might need to replace the complete valve with another valve type or valve size. Check out other online videos about solenoid valve service and selection. Please note that not all solenoid valves are serviceable. Here you see an overview of serviceable and non-serviceable solenoid valves. Serviceable valves with malfunction can be serviced by using suitable service kits. Non-serviceable valves with malfunction will need to be replaced by new valves. Now, if there seems to be damaged, corrosive or maybe missing valve parts after earlier service, causing the valve not to open, then the first step is to take the valve apart as seen shortly here, if it is serviceable, inspect the internal valve parts, replace worn or missing parts using suitable service kits as mentioned earlier in this video. Check out other online videos about solenoid valve service. Next step is to compare the actual system pressures and temperatures with the technical data of the valve being used. If the system data exceeds the valve data, then you should replace the complete valve with another valve type which can meet the system conditions. Check out other Danfoss online learnings about solenoid valves for this purpose. So to summarize, from this solenoid valve troubleshooting video, you now know how to efficiently identify root causes and make corrective actions related to that the solenoid valve does not open. This way minimizing system shutdown time and service costs. Please search for the other online solenoid valve troubleshooting videos to learn about relevant valve failure root causes and how to solve them with suitable corrective actions. Have a look at the other Danfoss online videos about solenoid valve troubleshooting and other videos where I talk about valves. Thanks for watching.